the Northeast Independent School District Department of Special Education has updated the titles of services and supports in order to have consistent district-wide terminology to help parents, staff, and students understand the special education program. This presentation reviews the services and supports which may be identified by the ARD as options for the delivery of specially designed instruction. The titles provided in this module and the reference document are the new terms to be used by ARD committees and by staff when discussing and documenting special education services and supports in elementary, middle, and high schools. The course name changes which may impact scheduling and course identification have been revised and are updated in the secondary course catalog for the 2015-16 school year. The IEP goals and objectives are based upon the enrolled grade level curriculum and address student needs. The ARD identifies the curricular or instructional supports which range between the least and most restrictive for the delivery of specially designed instruction. Accommodations support access to the enrolled grade level curriculum through changes to materials or procedures that enable students with disabilities to participate meaningfully during instruction. Accommodations are often described as leveling the playing field for students who learn differently or who need to demonstrate their knowledge differently than their peers. Accommodations are intended to reduce or even eliminate the effects of student disability without reducing learning expectations. It is important to keep in mind that while some accommodations may be appropriate for instructional use, they may not be appropriate or allowable on statewide assessment. Modifications are different than accommodations. Modifications are practices and procedures that change the nature of the task or the target skill. These changes alter the expectations or complexity of the curriculum. Alternative IEP goals support the student in making progress on skills which are prerequisite to the enrolled grade level curriculum. These goals may include and address functional academic as well as communication, personal, and or life skills. This graphic representation of three points on the continuum for curriculum and instruction refer to the tiers of services and supports provided through special education. Remember, these are not silos in which the students are categorized, but rather categories to describe instructional access to the enrolled grade level curriculum. Note as well that one student may access multiple points on this continuum depending on variables such as academic content, requirements for the course, and the levels of support needed for instruction in order for the student to meaningfully participate and to make progress in the curriculum and the IEP. Each student's services and supports are unique to the specific needs identified in the individualized educational program. Take a moment to review the components for each point on the continuum. Having a basic understanding of the continuum and least restrictive environment is the next step in connecting how special education services and supports are identified for a student with an IEP. Keep in mind that generally accommodations, modifications, and alternate curricular standards can be implemented in either general or special education settings based upon variables such as academic content, requirements of the course, and levels of support needed for instruction in order for the student to meaningfully participate and make progress in the curriculum and the IEP. Historically, Northeast Independent School District has used multiple terms to describe these settings. Secondary campuses use different terms than elementary campuses. Transitions between grade levels became confusing and created concerns. This presentation will provide the revised service and support titles and descriptors that Northeast Independent School District will begin using to describe instructional and related services. The decision about these identifiers used for these services and supports was not made by an individual or behind closed doors. 
Feedback from administrators, parents, and other district personnel informed a committee. This feedback revealed three basic concepts that were consistent across stakeholder groups. There was a need for the district to use common language across grade levels and align to the district services and supports discussed during ARD meetings needed to accurately describe options along the continuum. The provision of consistent titles that are logical and simple for parents, staff, and students to understand should be the ones considered by the committee. The document posted with this presentation is a reference tool which includes the titles and descriptors that the Northeast Independent School District will use to identify services and supports. This presentation will review each section of the document to describe the framework and the terms being used. It is understood that staff may have challenges learning to update their language and that change takes time and practice. It is the expectation that all personnel will endeavor to make these changes as a part of the alignment process. Special education administrative and appraisal staff are responsible for consistently modeling and speaking with one voice in using the updated language. Adaptive Physical Education, or APE, is identified when the IEP includes goals that alter the physical education curriculum to an extent that the goals cannot be implemented by the general education PE teacher alone. The ARD identifies adaptive PE based on an individualized assessment for eligibility. Adaptive physical education goals may include direct or consultative supports from an adaptive PE teacher. An alternative learning environment supports students when the IEP identifies a need for an alternative curriculum which is significantly modified and generally requires instruction at an alternate pace with a smaller staff to student ratio. The IEP identifies prerequisites to the general curriculum through goals that are vertically aligned to the enrolled grade level. Students who are identified with an auditory or visual impairment will have an IEP that includes supports and services that provide access with instruction and accommodations that address the needs of the disability. When a teacher who is certified in the area of the specialty is required, that teacher is identified as one of the implementers of the IEP. IEPs may also specify assistive technology, braille, large print, orientation and mobility, or various layers of sign language or communication supports that are required in order to support the student in making progress in the general curriculum and the IEP. The Northeast Independent School District offers the Regional Day School Program for the Deaf. This is a program that serves students with auditory impairments, not only from Northeast Independent School District, but from districts that are participants in our shared service arrangement. Not all students with auditory impairments utilize the Regional Day School Program. Some students have accommodations that allow access to instruction at their home campus. The Regional Day School Program is more restrictive on the continuum than the supports and services provided on the home campus. The Regional Day School Program may be considered by the ARD only when the student's hearing loss severely impairs the processing of linguistic information through hearing, even with recommended amplification, and adversely affects the educational performance. The ARD also considers data about the student's primary mode of communication. IEP goals indicate that a teacher certified to instruct students who have auditory impairments is required for implementation. The Regional Day School Program is staffed with individuals who have specialized skills. In the Northeast Independent School District, there are three campuses identified to house the Regional Day School Program. Oak Meadow serves elementary age students. Jackson Middle School supports 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Churchill currently serves students in high school. Extended year services and supports may be provided beyond the typical school year when the ARD committee determines that based on documented evidence, the student may be expected to exhibit severe or substantial regression in a critical skill area that cannot be recouped within the reasonable period of time. A skill is critical when the loss of that skill results or is reasonably expected to result in any of the following occurrences during the first eight weeks of the next school year. Placement in a more restrictive instructional arrangement, 
significant loss of an acquired skill necessary for the student to appropriately progress in the general curriculum or on the IEP, significant loss of self-sufficiency in self-help areas, loss of access to community-based independent living skills, instruction, or an independent living environment provided by non-educational sources, loss of access to on-the-job training or productive employment. The general education classroom is an environment where IEP goals may be implemented. These goals may or may not modify the enrolled grade level curriculum. Allow me to elaborate. When special education services and supports are provided in the general education setting, the IEP identifies exactly what those services and supports look like. Therefore, they have titles too. Students will generally have specific accommodations identified in the IEP. These accommodations are instructionally based with the purpose of leveling the playing field as the student participates during instruction. Accommodations do not reduce learning or performance expectations. They do not change the target skill or the student expectation in the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. Students may have time-based accommodations. When an ARD identifies this, it is essential to identify exactly what is meant so that all who are connected to the student know the time parameters that are being offered. Some students have accommodations that adapt the way that information is accessed during instruction. Other students may need the group size within the instructional setting adapted. Some may need an adjustment for the auditory or visual supports being offered during instruction. Accommodations may also be reflected in the manner that students respond to instruction. Accommodations should be specific and based on the data collected about a student's learning needs, styles, and identified areas of disability. Accommodations do not give the student an advantage over other students. Accommodations allow a student to learn in an equitable manner. Students with IEPs who are supported in general education may have adults who support specific needs. When a second adult is needed in the classroom, the IEP will designate that a special education teacher will be present for the class using the term co-teach. This term means that the two teachers are active in the classroom and participate in collaborative planning, instruction, and the use of specially designed techniques, accommodations, or modifications. The IEP identifies the time commitment that the special education teacher will make to supporting the student in the classroom. If the service needed in the classroom is identified in the IEP as in-class support, a paraprofessional will assist the student under the direction of the special education teacher. When done correctly, these personnel supports can have a positive impact on instruction and student progress. Homebound and hospital supports are considered to be very restrictive settings due to the limitations in access to peers. To be considered for homebound services, the ARD reviews and considers medical information from the treating physicians as a part of the decision making. The IEP must specify that, due to medical limitations, instruction will take place in the home or hospital setting if the data supports this decision. Time allocated for instruction in the home or hospital may not be equivalent clock hours to the regular school day. The ARD will determine the schedule and record it in the IEP. According to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Improvement Act, children from birth through age two who have a visual or auditory impairment are eligible for special education services that are indicated in the Individualized Family Service Plan, or IFSP, the infant level of an IEP. Infant services and supports take place in a variety of settings. The Northeast Independent School District has certified personnel with specialties in serving the youngest children who are eligible for special education supports. Preschool programs for children with disabilities include all of the services and supports for students with IEPs who are aged three to five years old. Goals may be implemented through a variety of services and supports, including, but not limited to, special education, general education, pre-K, or walk-in services. The ARD will determine the services and supports for each student. 
Redirection and supports for behavior through special education begin with an IEP in which goals target behavioral challenges that restrict a student's ability to access instruction. The IEP indicates that goals in social skills, emotional controls, or behavior management are needed. These goals may be implemented in both a general and special education setting. They may include, but are not limited to, a single location. The IEP will define, describe, and allot time to the individual needs of the student. Related services are supplemental supports to the specially designed instruction identified in the IEP. Some of the goals will require related services to support implementation. Related services do not stand in isolation, nor can they be the only support or service needed by the child. Some examples of related services may include assistive technology, audiology services, counseling, health services, music therapy, occupational therapy, orientation and mobility, physical therapy, sign language interpretation, or transportation. Resource is the term that Northeast Independent School District uses to identify the courses or units of time in which a student leaves the general education classroom to receive direct instruction from a special education teacher. In the Northeast Independent School District, secondary schools will experience the impact of this vocabulary change. Secondary courses that were formerly called lab now have a course number that is associated to the term resource. The course title of lab no longer is associated with special education courses. Elementary campuses will not experience an impact as this is the term that has been in place. The benefit of aligning these terms will be in the communication of professionals who discuss students who will be moving from one level to the next. It also clarifies and simplifies the terms used to describe specially designed instruction that takes place in a special education classroom for a designated period of time. Instruction in the resource setting usually follows the identification of IEP goals, which either modify the enrolled grade level curriculum or indicate that the student requires support that cannot be provided in the general education classroom. IEP goals indicating practices and procedures that change the nature of the task or target skill may be addressed in resource. Goals related to behavioral or social skills objectives or utilize specialized services and supports such as Braille, sign language, or specialized technology may also be addressed in resource. When IEP goals require services and supports from a licensed speech and language pathologist or a supervised SLP assistant, a student will have speech therapy identified as a service. Speech therapy may be delivered individually, in small groups, or within an instructional setting. One must be aware that these services can either be listed as instructional or as a related service depending on the program design for the student. Speech therapy is considered to be instructional when it is the only support required through special education. Just to clarify, that means that the student does not receive any other special education services. When the IEP identifies multiple services and supports for the student that include speech therapy and other supports, then the speech therapy services are considered to be a related service and are documented in the IEP as such. Whether services are instructional or related, goals may address articulation, language, and communication skills. The IEP will also define what supports look like. Therapy may be consultative with other professionals or offer direct instruction. This decision is based on the individual student needs. Northeast Transition Services is not a specific place. Transition includes a coordinated set of activities that address the student's post-secondary goals. Transition services begin no later than the student's 14th birthday. Transition may include planning for life outside of the public school system, post-secondary educational options, employment goals, independent or supported living skills, or agency supports. Transition goals are not just for students with significant disabilities. All students who have IEPs 
will also have transition addressed by the ARD. Transition is more like a tapestry of thinking and activities that are continuously woven throughout elementary, middle, and high school. All decisions, beginning at the student's initial ARD, should be made with a consideration for transition to life after high school. TEA has published the Texas Transition and Employment Guide that specifically discusses the multifaceted transition services. The guide identifies numerous areas of consideration, such as self-advocacy, vocational or educational opportunities, job and work options, health and human services, social security programs, community activities, guardianship, independence and living arrangements. Transition for secondary students with IEPs is specially designed planning and instruction that supplements the individual's graduation plans in which a student selects the courses and endorsements through House Bill 5. The reference document that accompanies this presentation is intended to be a tool that supports planning and implementation for student IEPs. This online course provided information concerning students with IEPs. The first portion identified the terminology for the services and supports that are used by the Northeast Independent School District to describe a student's specially designed instructional program. These services and supports may be delivered across a continuum of environments that range from least to most restrictive. The ARD defines each one in the IEP depending on the specific needs of the student. There are a few changes that will require professional staff to adjust the language used to identify a service option. The reference tool is provided to assist professionals in identifying and clarifying those services and supports. Thank you for participating in this course.